So, uh, the net result is, for the statutes that implement treaties, there's no doubt you can look at the treaty and the development of the jurisprudence around it. For the common law, I think there's no doubt now that you can look at the international principles, at least where they reflect universal values of human rights, to see if our common law is in harmony with uh, the previous statements of the, uh, hum of the uh, common law. And as to the constitution, that is still uh, an open question. If it weren't that it relates to the High Court, I would say the jury is still out. Well, the High Court's still out on this issue. Uh, but if we look at the world of the internet and the power of ideas and the power and influence of um, the ideas that all professions get from overseas and the legal profession gets from international jurisprudence, it would seem to me inevitable that, uh, as in most countries of the world, we would accept that the world and its developments of universal uh, human rights and international law is part of the context in which you now read a national constitution. Adjusting the world of today to the world of treaties, uh, of technology, of the internet, of global problems is the challenge that Gough Whitlam faced in his attempt to adjust the relationship between Australia and the world in treaties and uh, in uh, relations with other countries. Any other questions? Now Jason, have you got a question? <laughs> Was there anything that I left out that I should have mentioned? Was there anything that you thought was really important that I omitted in my uh, highly expurgated version of the paper? Uh, no, Mr. Kirby, perhaps you could make some reference to your last judgment on the High Court of Australia? Uh, well, the very last judgment of mine on the High Court of Australia was the case of Wurrigal against the, uh, the Commonwealth. That was the challenge to the constitutional validity of the uh, Northern Territory Intervention Act of the Commonwealth. Uh, the majority of the justices of the High Court held that that was a valid law of the Commonwealth. I held that it was unconstitutional and, and, and invalid, at least to the point that the Aboriginal litigants should have their day in court. The majority upheld a demurra and struck the matter out as not legally arguable. I considered that it was. In the course of my reasons, I uh, said that if what was done under that legislation was done to any other group in the Australian community, uh, if the International Convention against all forms of racism was lifted in its application, uh, if the Racial Discrimination Act was lifted uh, in its application, if power were given to police to intervene in the most intimate lives of the people, if power were given also to Australian soldiers and troops to intervene in their lives, if power was given to affect the relationship with their homes, their land and their sacred places, if that was done to Greek Australians or to Irish Australians or to Asian Australians or any other such group, there would be an outcry. Uh, and that, it seemed to me, was one reason why a just uh, legal system would ensure that the matter was fully and carefully considered on the evidence in a hearing. Chief Justice French uh, said that uh, that view amounted to a gratuitous uh, intervention uh, in the uh, matter and I responded that it wasn't gratuitous, it was absolutely central to my reasoning. But uh, to understand Wurrigal you have to read the case, it's not uh, not something to be dealt with superficially, it's a very important case, but it is my view that in time to come it will be seen as the uh, equivalent to the Korematsu case in the Supreme Court of the United States when the Supreme Court in wartime upheld the power of the United States uh, administration to remove all Japanese into internment camps and take them a long way away from the west coast uh, of the United States of America. I noted on the internet just before I came to this lecture today, because I am now uh, an habitué of the internet since I lost my clerks and employees who could guard me against uh, searching in the internet and now I have to do it all myself. I even have to send emails myself. <laughs> 
that uh, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on, I think, Indigenous people uh, has uh, expressed the view that the intervention legislation, insofar as it lifts the Racial Discrimination Act and lifts the application of the international, uh, the international um, treaty, uh, needs to be given much closer attention and implementation in Australia. And one would hope that, uh, consonant with the type of values that have expressed in my lecture, that Gough Whitlam uh, consistently approached uh, such problems throughout his public life, that that will be done and done hastily. Done hastily. Are there any other questions? Well, that's it. <laughs>it's a great pleasure to see so many um, friends, um, students, members of the legal profession, the business community, the community at large and especially um, representative, representatives of the Whitlam family um, here tonight. Um, I think uh, most of you will know that since his retirement from the High Court, Michael Kirby has been in great demand. His well-known capacity for hard work is clearly undiminished as he continues to maintain a work schedule which for others of us would be considered punishing and unreasonable. Um, and so we're, we're very grateful and indeed very fortunate tonight to have this opportunity to hear from him. Notwithstanding his many other commitments, uh, Michael graciously accepted a position as adjunct professor in the University of Western Sydney School of Law. This was a great honour for us wonderful for our staff but even more so for our students to be able to um, interact with, hear from, read the judgments of um, this exceptional Australian. Many here will also know that Gough Whitlam has long been a supporter and a friend of this university um, and during his parliamentary career and beyond he was an advocate for a university in Western Sydney at a time when others thought such a notion was very far-fetched. His connection with the university remains strong, of course, um, through the Whitlam Institute. Um, the Institute's not only a custodian of the Prime Ministerial, Whitlam Prime Ministerial Collection, but has a growing public policy role in addressing the contemporary relevance of the issues that Gough championed throughout his public life and continues to champion. So it's fitting that the UWS School of Law and the Whitlam Institute should be co-hosting this evening's lecture. There are few people better placed than Michael Kirby to elaborate on both the vision and the struggle which Gough articulated during um, his time in government and since. Michael's humanity, his intellect, his profound knowledge of the law, and indeed his own life experiences enlivened and enriched his address to us this evening. The interest in this lecture um, was um, evident from the fact that we were vastly oversubscribed um, and for every person here there are two somewhere out there tonight who are deeply disappointed um, but I'm sure there'll be other opportunities in future Michael for you to address that crowd and perhaps... Um, I'll repeat the same. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, or we, we shall podcast it forthwith. Um, I, I think that um, the, the affection which is held for Michael in, the com in which Michael is held in the community tells us something about the unquenched desire among so many Australians to have their rights articulated, recognised and protected. So please join me in thanking Michael Kirby. Thank you. That's a beautiful speech. Thank you.